Hey, today let's take some time and talk about bath fans. I know they're not exciting, but you know what? They are one of the hardest working things in your bathroom. They absolutely improve the air quality in your home, and for that reason, I think that we should spend some time talking about them. Okay, so first, why a bath fan? So three reasons. First, to remove the steam from your bathroom. So condensation that builds up after a shower or a bath, all that needs to be gotten out of your bathroom because if you don't, it runs down the walls, it can take wallpaper off, it can peel paint, it can rust fixtures, and it can warp doors. And all of that should be avoided. Second of all, if you are using bathroom cleaners that are really strong, you need to be able to get those fumes out, especially in a bathroom that doesn't have a window or any other kind of ventilation you can become asphyxiated actually with those. So that's one reason. And the third reason is odors. And I don't know that anything else really needs to be said about that here. I think you can understand. Okay, five things that you really must know about a bath fan. First of all, when you go to purchase, the price of the fan should be related to how heavy the use of the bathroom is. So if it's a master bathroom that you and your husband are using a lot and creating a lot of steam in there, your bath fan should be more expensive. It should be well over $100. Um, if it's a, a half bath or a water closet or a guest bathroom that does not get very much use, then you're fine to use one that's in the $40 range even. And I have linked two kinds that I like in both price ranges on my blog post, so you'll wanna take a look at that. Let's see, number two, Okay, if you are doing a remodel and you're going to buy a new bath fan, it's really important that you know the depth of the joist in your ceiling. And the reason that I say this is because just a few months ago, I did a remodel for a bathroom and it had two by four ceiling joists, so they were three and a half inches tall, and there was a roof right above that. So I had to get a very low profile ceiling fan. And I found one, Panasonic had one, and it even had a built-in moisture sensor in it and everything. It was a really nice bath fan. I was thrilled with it. But if I had gone and just ordered my usual bath fan, it wouldn't have fit. And what's so critical about that is you've got guys that have a license to do what they do and they make good money. And suddenly they've come to your house, they've driven all the way there, and then they can't do anything. So it's really frustrating for them. And then it's frustrating for you because you're like, oh, I've gotta get this switched out and you have to scramble. So know your details first, if there's any way possible and buy the right size fan. Let's see, do not install a bath fan directly in your shower, you know, right up above it. I have seen that done before and there are a few bath fans out there that are UL listed approved for that, but not very many. And I sometimes find it hard to find that information. So I just steer away from it completely. When I'm laying out my plan for my bathroom, I always plan for it to be, for the bath fan to be outside the shower door on the ceiling there. I always want them in the highest part. <sighs> Buy your bath fan early in the process. By the time you are framing your remodel or your new bathroom up, if you're building a new house, you need to already have your bath fan because not long after that, the HVAC and the electrician are going to come and you need to have it. You need to know if it's gonna have a light, if there's a separate uh, moisture sensor, or if there's one built into it, and so forth. So you need to go ahead and have that on hand. And number five on my list is people. Clean your bath fan at least a couple of times a year with a horsehair brush on the end of your vacuum cleaner. You've got to get up there and clean that grill off. And it is also good to pop the grill off and clean up in the housing of the fan around the motor because if they run a lot, and if you're in Kentucky like I am, where there's high moisture, high humidity, you are gonna, you need to do it at least twice a year. I, I do mine twice a year. I'd probably feel better about it if I did it quarterly, but I don't, so there you go. But anyway, try to take good care of your bath fan. When you go to buy your bath fan, there's a lot of options that you need to know about. So I'm going to kind of go through them. I have a list of eight. <laughs> it's a long list, so, but just bear with me. I'll go through it as quickly as I can. First of all, ceiling mount or wall mount. There are a few wall mount models out there and I have seen wall mounts when I've gone to do a remodel in an older home. I, I have changed that though. Like I took out the wall and put it in a ceiling. So always try to go with the ceiling mount, bottom line. Number two, how much airflow do you need? Airflow is measured by CFMs, 
that's like cubic, hold on, cubic feet per minute of air that's moved. But there's a good rule of thumb for that. So say your bathroom is 100 square feet, then you would need a fan that's about 100 CFMs. But they don't make it in exactly 100 CFMs, like there's a 110 CFM model, so just round up. If your bathroom needs 60 to 70 CFMs, then round up to the 80 uh, model. And I've already talked about this a little bit, the size of the unit of the body, you need to have an idea of where you're going to put it and what size fan that you need to go there. How quiet do you want the fan to be? Um, they have a rating, sort of like a dishwasher, where they measure the zones of a fan. And so I have a little bit of a rule of thumb for this. <laughs> if it's in the master bathroom and I'm in there a lot and it's going to run a lot, I want it to be really quiet. So the more high-end fans have zones that are less than one. Like I see 0.3 and 0.35 a lot. So one is quiet and five is loud. There are other fans, the cheaper ones, that run like 3.5 zones. And so I'll look for those in my cheaper model fans that I put in my powder rooms and in my water closets and stuff like that. And the reason that I do that is because it's just nice to have that extra sound to kind of muffle any bodily functions that are going on. So that's another reason why I like those. Let's see, number four. Five, do you want a light on the bath fan? And there's even a couple of different light options. So you can go ahead and get a full regular light or you can get one that has a night light. I think there's even some that have both. There's also a decorative fan that has, so when you see the house, you don't see the housing of the fan. Obviously it's above the drywall, but it looks like a can light, except that it's just, there's a lot of space between the wall of it and the light, like this much space all the way around it. And that's where the air goes in. So there are options with the light. And the reason that you need to know the, about this is because you have to know this before the electrician ever comes to rough in your bathroom. So if you've got a fan that has a light on it and you don't let the electrician know, you may get in a situation where when you flip the switch on, it turns on your fan and it turns on your light and you can't work them independently of each other. So if you wanna be in there and just have a light on, you can't or vice versa. So that's why I'm always saying plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead, and go and buy your stuff. Let's see, do you want a heater? Some of bath fans come with a heater on them, and you need to know that early because they can pull a lot of G's, and you will may need to have a separate circuit or something. I don't know, but your electrician needs to know that information very early on in the game, and he needs to put the right kind of switches on the wall. Condensation sen uh, sensor or a moisture sensor. So. These are also maybe called dehumidistats, and I am a big proponent of those. A lot more of the bath fans now have them built into them. And so I think it has a way that you can set it in there for the percent of relative humidity that you want. So here in Kentucky, we set ours on 55% relative humidity. And the fan runs until it senses that it's dropped below 55%. So if it's at 70, 60, 55, all those, it'll run until it just drops below that and then it'll shut off on its own. And when that's helpful is, take for example, when my husband and I get ready to go in the morning, he takes a shower first and then I come in right behind him and take a shower and I take a long shower. So that's two showers in a row, that's a lot of condensation. I happen to get ready really quick so, you know, 20 minutes after I'm out of the shower, I'm dressed and ready to leave. If I just left the bath fan on for that 20 minutes and turned it off when I got ready to leave the bathroom, it wouldn't be enough. There would still be too much moisture in that bathroom. So that's why I love the humidity sensor on it. If you don't get one in the fan, you can get one to go in the wall. But you have to know early so that your electrician can wire for it properly. And that's the last, the last thing is really you just need to know how you want your fan to look. I happen to like, just like that plain white grill. And as a side note, I do paint that grill. I did a bathroom not long ago where I painted the ceiling kind of a soft smoky egg, uh, eggplant color. And I painted, I had my painter also paint the fan cover. But you can get some decorative lights and the can light that I mentioned. So there are several different looks. When it comes to installing your new bath fan, it takes two tradespeople. That, same, that seems crazy, but it's true. So the electrician actually installs the housing and hooks it up, wires it to electric and runs the switch or switches or sensor and all that. But then your HVAC person 
And when you look at HVAC, so it's heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So the ventilation part of it is done by your HVAC contractor. And they have to run a solid insulated pipe to the outside of your home. In the 70s or in 80s, it was okay for a bath fan to just release their air into the attic, and that is no longer up to code. It was never a really good idea. I don't know why they thought it was. So it has to either go out through your roof, which I don't like. I don't ever like to make a piercing on the roof if I don't have to. Out the wall, side wall of your house, if maybe you've got a gable or something, or they'll drop over and go into the soffit, which is kind of my personal favorite. So two different trades to hook up a bath fan. I know it's a pain, but it's worth it. Okay, so I hope this cleared up all of the questions that you might have about a bath fan and let you know how positively vital they are to just the indoor air quality of your home. Bath fan is super important. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up below. If you want some more information, just ask. Here on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere, I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you.